Good morning. Uh, this is Paul with with uh, Jared Urban. Say good morning, Jared. Good morning. And Ben. Jared. Hey, Ben. Um, How are you doing? Uh, Ben's going to describe a little bit to us what what we're uh, trying to accomplish here, and so I'll, I'll I'll take it away, Ben. What are we looking at? Well, we've got the old dike system here. This was all man-made fill uh, put in here to dam up the former impoundment, and. Uh, so we removed a portion of it here again, 20 years after the initial removal. So we removed the dam. It was one of the first projects I was involved in 20 years ago and uh, drained the impoundment down. And when they removed that portion, there was, uh, uh, they got to a point where they could no longer dig with the equipment they had on site. And then uh, subsequent years later, we had recognized that there was a, perched elevation still there so there was still remnant fill in terms of the headwaters and uh, we tried dynamite a couple times had some explosives people come in here and threw rocks all over the place but it still didn't head cut the way we had hoped uh, so 20 years later we came in and got a different piece of equipment and we pulled it out and we also graded back some of the uh, the dike material so um, you can see the, the dike material on the other side is still uh, pretty uh, distinct. It's brought up elevation probably 10 to 12 feet from mm -hmm. the original elevation. And the purpose of head cutting is to, you know, provide a more, restore the hydrology. You know, we want to mm -hmm. restore that, mm -hmm. that gradient and we want to restore the velocity of the stream and expose sand and gravel and provide trout cover. And also we want to restore the hydrology for the wetland species that surround this area. So hopefully the burns will be more effective and future controlling of that Phragmites we see up there. Mm -hmm. And as well as the cattail, we'll get more native species here. So. And this area in front of us that you've, you're taping off this morning is, is a calcareous fen, or a, a, a special kind of spring. Um, and uh, I... I don't want to put, you know, um, jump it too much here, but I, I think the DNR is even contemplating not, uh, re not replacing that bridge over there. Have you heard a little bit about that at all yet? Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, an issue we need to talk about as um, all user groups, including, you know, our friends of the Scuppernong, the trail groups, the park service. The, um, but basically, there's been a lot of talk about providing an ADA-approved uh, walkway from Ottawa Lake all the way up to the headwaters which to me I'm totally in favor of we can I, in my opinion I think we can do that and still maintain the ecological diversity we have mm -hmm. and it'll probably bring more attention to it which is good in terms of um, in my opinion in terms of restoring that that mm -hmm. native diversity of mm -hmm. terrestrial and aquatic and mm -hmm. marsh plants so so it's it's um, still undecided whether or not there will be a replacement bridge here, or if if the only bridge across the river might be down uh, to our right, down by the old mill site. It, it's possible. It's up in the area. It hasn't yeah. been decided. Well, let's you know. Let's walk over to that bridge and check out the uh, the exca the excavation of the dam, and uh, and we should just point out that that dam it was excavated. You got how much deeper did you go, Ben? And 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 how how long was the excavation? Well, it was. Uh, 200 cubic feet, approximately uh, 12 inches down, and uh, yeah, so that's about it. 200 cubic feet. The um, character of the riverbed is is changing definitely uh the area that we just passed seems to have a lot more um, texture if you will in the surface of the um of the river yeah when you do a dam removal the slower you go the better so mm -hmm. um downstream we have some grade controls there's a former dike downstream you had mentioned the the old mill site yeah the potential to have a a walkway down there for the you know ADA approved mm -hmm. accessible walkway and 
but that, you, that grade control down there is currently impeding any uh, fast, fast head cutting of this portion, which is a good thing. Interesting. You know, I, I, I think that that works out ideally. Having that grade control downstream is slowing this process upstream. And that'll give a whole growing season or two, depending on when we get to the downstream portion, time to um, head cut a little bit slowly and s slowly form its new channel. Well, let's go take a uh, walk up to the edge of that, uh, the upper edge where it, it, where it is making a head cut. Before we do though, I just want to point out there's, there's a, there are a lot of seeping springs here, cal calcareous fen. Um, and this is a unique location. And so it's part of the uh, calculation of how this area should be uh, developed or not going forward is, is uh, dependent on how we're going to handle these springs. But let's go check out the... the um... here, Paul, oh, sure. Over here. When you look at the fill, you can see the old boards. You know, th this is part of the reason that the structure was not able to be removed is there's a lot of infrastructure they put in here along with the marl and the clay that they use to build this dike. But you can see this dike as it goes right into that that ridge system. Just over there we have the pork gaster up in, in that area. Real heavy um, mm -hmm. patch, that's our strongest population. And it, it does come all the way down to uh, am amongst these columbine. Uh, there are, there's fork gaster all the way up to the, br uh, the bridge site. Right, so we, we want to see wait and see what comes up out of here because I'm thinking we're going to get some good native seabed exposed as yes. a result of peeling that back and um, we don't want people trampling across mm -hmm. it which is why we put the caution tape up now and so would you mind uh, explain you took out 200 cubic feet now where did where did the um, the waste or the, uh, the 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 material that was removed from the river bed where, where what what was done with that it was put up in the higher ground up there on uh, just up past that caution tape, that second ring of caution tape. Okay. There. Oh, okay. Now, is this a permanent location for all of the fill that was removed? Or is anything need to be? Does anything need to be moved again? Oh, well, we're not certain yet. Okay. Um, I've been told that there was some slender bog arrow grass, which was an oversight on my part, and uh, some say that we should leave it there because we've created a new aster site there because we, we see some aster coming up in that area um, and then on the other hand there was some slender bog arrow grass there so uh, it could go either way okay at this point well my personal opinion is to remove all the dike material all the way up Mm -hmm. including the side and restore the hydrology completely oh that's brilliant so that would you would take this out right? that would be my recommendation oh, interesting and i mean it it has temporary impacts always mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. it's one step back two steps forward in my opinion but restoring the hydrology is a big picture approach to restoring the native diversity and mm -hmm. uh, a, that's an interesting point about moving this 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 the um, the embankment because we've got one uh, downstream from us at the old mill site and there's at least two more embankments upstream. Would you, would you consider in including in, in the scope of the embankment removal all of the embankment material in the whole valley? Uh, perhaps. I mean, there's some historical value there as well. You know, so it's a good blend. You want to you have to do a cost benefit in terms of determining what can we gain as far as removal mm -hmm. and what will be lost. So. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look down at this uh, at this he uh, head cut uh, that's uh, slowly forming here, and uh, and then we'll let uh, Ben uh, tell us what we're looking at. Well, go ahead, Ben. What uh, what's going on here? Well, it's like I said, a slow process of head cutting. It's the movement of soft sediments and. Um, silt and what it does is leaves behind the coarser material mm -hmm. and you can see a little bit real close here a little sand and gravel exposed and hopefully in the future you know we'll develop a strong channel with defined bed and bank higher velocities less thermal pollution mm -hmm. whereas right now it's wide and slow we want to see it narrow and fast well, it's uh, the surface of the uh, riverbed is is definitely changed. You can see this the dunes, if you will, at the base of the 
uh, at the bed of the uh, the river. That that's completely. Those are completely new features. And that's the movement you're seeing. It's slow, but yes, it's it's slowly moving downstream. And behind each, what you call dune, is a little pocket of silt. That's the dark area. That's the the lightest. Um, sediment mm -hmm. and this this um, I think that's horsetails there am I right on that Jared or that yeah. th yes um, thanks Jared uh, I, that's new that 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 wasn't there before and I don't know if it's uh, that bank we're seeing over there is a little drier than it was as indicative of already the the um, the narrowing of the channel and the in the uh, the reduction in the width of the river is maybe evidenced by that the uh, proliferation of the horsetails over there, but I may be speaking out of turn, but I, that's that's one thing I've observed looking at it. If we if we drop the elevation here four or six inches, what you'll see is exposed beds on the outside, um, sediment beds on the outside of the bends and things, and mm -hmm. you'll see these those emergent mm -hmm. wetland species coming up. Uh, Jared or, or Ben, from your experience, uh, as, as we narrow the channel. And, and how do you think that will affect the the Phragmites and the cattails that have uh, uh, dom that are dominating the river valley here? Um, it's interesting. Uh, it's probably gonna so it's gonna drop the water levels a little bit, and I'm not I'm not sure what will happen. The, the, the roots the root systems are still in, are still integrated with the river, so it would. I'm expecting that the the, the, the the vegetative material is still going to be sucking water out of the river. But yeah, I'm I'm guessing they'll probably still find it to be suitable habitat. Um, it might if if the cattails weren't here, it probably would decrease the chance that they would expand to those areas. Mm -hmm. But since they are here, I'm not sure that they'll go away. Right. Well, we'll have to. Well, but uh, it might it might make the burning more effective if we can reduce the uh, the, the the amount of water that's. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I hate to say it that way. It doesn't. I and mean, we have a wetland here. It's not like we're trying to reduce the water. But what was your theory on that, Ben? That we could improve improve the 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 outcome of the fires possibly. What I've seen downstream, and they're different species completely. It was a lot of uh, reed canary grass and purple loosestrife is. You know, when we have a situation where the water level's a little higher than it should be, the burns aren't as effective. So you'll get this strip along the river where you've got the invasive species mm -hmm. um, taking over. And mm -hmm. I hope that my hope is that by restoring the hydrology, we can move towards improving the diversity and abundance of native species up in this area. And yes, making the burns more effective, making everything more effective. It, Mm -hmm. Giving the uh, native species the upper hand by getting the hydrology closer to where it needs to be. That's great. Well, I think we've about covered everything. Did any of you guys want to add anything to our discussion here this morning? No, this is just kind of, I, I do have something to add. I think I think this is awesome that um, we've got so many groups here because we've got um, Sewer Pack, Southeast Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, we've got the Friends of the Scuppernong involved. And uh, this recent work, although it, you know, it's, we've stepped on a number of threatened and endangered plant species, that's just, uh, like I said, part of one step back, two steps forward. Mm -hmm. um, so long term, we got to look at the long term benefits of restoring the hydrology here and the plants we, we're just going to have to continue to work at. That makes perfect sense. Thank, thanks, Ben. Thanks, Jared.